So again, we're going to be looking at the book of Proverbs. What is teach? Mm. Cool. The book of Proverbs, what it teaches about being good at life. Again, Bible project, subscribe. You see, I got that bell notification on it. Hold on. Go ahead. I missed it. I missed it again. Hold on. Aim. Smash that like button. Go ahead and show some love. You know what I'm saying? Um, now, eight seconds divided by three. There are three books in the Bible that have come to be called the wisdom literature, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Job. And all of these books are addressing the same set of questions. What kind of world are we living in? And what does it look like to live well in this world? So how to be good at life? Yeah. So each of these books tackles these questions from a unique perspective, and it's important to understand all of them to get a fully biblical perspective on the good life. So as a thought experiment, you could actually imagine each of these books as a person. So Proverbs would be like this brilliant young teacher, and Ecclesiastes the sharp middle-aged critic, and Job would be this weathered old man who's seen a lot in his day. We're going to start by meeting the book of Proverbs, the brilliant young teacher. And she's not just smart, she's smart about everything, work, relationships, sex, spirituality. She has incredible insights things you wouldn't see on your own. Yeah, she would be the perfect friend to have around when you need really specific advice. So what makes her so smart? Well, Proverbs can see things that most people don't see. She believes that there's an invisible creative force in the universe that can guide people in how they should live. And you can't see it, just like you can't see gravity, but it affects everything that we do. So what's this force? Well, in Hebrew, it's called chokhmah, and it usually gets translated into English as wisdom. It's an attribute of God that God used to create the world. And Hokmah has been woven into the fabric of things and how they work. So wherever people are making good or just or wise decisions, they're tapping into Hokmah. And whenever someone's making a bad decision, they're working against Hokmah. Right, or as it says in Proverbs chapter 1, the waywardness of fools will destroy them, but the one who listens to wisdom lives in security. So it's like a moral law of the universe. Yeah, it's a cause-effect pattern, and no one can escape it. And Proverbs personifies all of this as a woman. Yeah, Lady Wisdom. Right, and she roams around the earth calling out, making herself available to anyone who's willing to listen to her and to learn. Which leads to the second thing Proverbs believes, that anyone can access and interact with wisdom and use it to make a beautiful life for yourself or for others. You can create with it like a designer. Yes, in fact, chokmah in Hebrew isn't simply intellectual knowledge. The word is also used to describe a skilled artisan who excels at their craft, like woodworking or stonemasonry. Mm. So you show you possess chokmah when you put it to work and develop the skill of making a good life. Okay, that makes sense. So let's do this. Let's go find some wisdom. But before you do, Proverbs has one more really important thing to consider. Chokmah isn't some impersonal force. It's an attribute of God himself. And so in Hebrew thought, your journey to becoming wise has to begin with what Proverbs calls the fear of the Lord. It's this healthy respect for God's definition of good and evil. And true wisdom means learning those boundary lines and not crossing them. Now, all those ideas you just unpacked are in chapters 1 through 9 in Proverbs. But when I think of the book of Proverbs, I think of the collection of sayings, the Proverbs themselves. Tell me about those. Yeah, those are what you find in chapters 10 on to the end of the book. It's a collection of hundreds and hundreds of Proverbs about any and all aspects of life. And Chokmah gets applied to them, resulting in this wise guidance to help you find a path towards success in no matter what you do. If I design my life with these sayings, life is going to be good. Yeah, or as Proverbs puts it, it'll give health to your bones, prosperity, a long, rich life. Which is a really big claim. But you can see how it's often the case. Wise people, they tend to do better. Things usually work out well for them in life. And so that is the promise and the wisdom of the book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs is really beautiful. But if we take a step back, some people would argue it's a little too simplistic. Because sometimes horrible things happen to really wise people, right. and sometimes oh. foolish people get rewarded. It doesn't always work the way we think it should work. That's right. Which is why we need to go and listen to our next wise friend, Ecclesiastes the Critic. Because he's wrestled with that very problem, and he's going to push us further in our journey to find the good life. 
again, the book of Proverbs, again, it talks all about lady wisdom. Okay. It talks all about how wisdom is all around us, how we can access this wisdom at all points in time. But what is this wisdom? You cannot have wisdom in life through your own, <laughs> through your own interactions and through your own experiences. Okay. You're very limited. So for example, let's just say you got hurt in a relationship and that's all you experience is hurt and pain inside of relationships, you're more inclined to tell people not to be in relationships. You're more inclined to tell people about the hurt and the pain that people go through, right? But that's the biggest thing is that knowledge is not just based on us. God, not, knowledge is based on God's knowledge, his wisdom, right? Interwoven into everything. So let me look, go ahead and look at a couple points here. Working with knowledge lives gives you security in life, right? Now again, what is that exactly does that mean? Working in knowledge gives you security in life. Well, how can I work with knowledge? Do I have to just read? Do I have to just pick up, you know, different books and learn different equations? No, because you know, that's more of a Greek, Greek theologian type of logic. You know what I'm saying? That's not the logic that we're talking about here. We're talking about the Bible's logic, God's logic. So when you live in God, then you live in security. This is essentially what it means, right? Now, this doesn't mean that everything is always gonna work out for you, but it's always gonna work out for God's plan. Once you have that type of knowledge in your life, once you have that type of wisdom, you also understand this as well. You're not phased by the upcomings that you know you can't quite see in life. You know what I'm saying? And again, what did Jesus Christ say? This is what's very, very essential, right? Because we know that wisdom is the attribute of God right when you live against god then you're living against wisdom then you're pretty much acting stupid but what did jesus christ say i am the way the truth and the life you know what i'm saying it's just when jesus christ says that i am the truth he's taking the attribute of god for himself he's not just saying this because it just feels good it is the truth he is wisdom he is the truth and people's like oh well jesus christ never claimed to be god he claimed very, very many attributes that only God, attributes that only God has. He's done many things that only God can do. So people was like, oh, well, you know, uh, I don't think Jesus ever claimed to be God. Okay, well then can you say that I and the Father are one and mean that? Can you say that you can forgive sins? Come on now. Can you say that you are the, the truth? Like in understanding what that means and you say, oh yeah, I can say that. And then also understand that I follow God. No, you can't say that. Cause that means that you're blaspheming and I'm cool on that side. You ever see that one person that just swears that they write? You ever see that one, how can I say this nicely? I don't care. You ever see that one ignorant person that just, just grind your gears, that they just don't know how to go against their ways. You're trying to tell them, yo, yo, you need to stop doing this because it's going to lead you here. Now nah, I'm cool. I got this. All right, bet. That's all you can do. Again, based off of Ephesians, which we just read, you're able to pray for them to have wisdom. You're able to pray for them. Go ahead and stop. Do Stop doing what you're doing. The greatest thing that we can do is pray. Pray for them to have wisdom. Pray for them to have understanding. Pray for them to seek God to receive that wisdom. Okay? And they will receive it. God will give graciously that, that wisdom to them. But it's up to them to understand and receive and to put it into action, as Jesus says. onto the And then onto a strong foundation, like he also says. Ooh, we learning these verses we started to, uh, to compile them together you see what i'm saying so if you have that one ignorant person in your life don't don't stop praying don't stop believing don't stop don't stop with that person because again we are a people we are a body of christ right so that means that we don't just keep to ourselves we need to figure out a way to reach other people outside of christianity i do not want to be in a room full of christians I, I, me personally, I don't. I want to be in a room with some close Christians all around me, a couple of them, and, and being in a sea of people that need to be saved. <laughs> that sounds pretty scary, but again, just like how Matthew says, uh, uh, plentiful is the work. Let's ask for more workers, okay? I know it's not an exact verse, but you see what I'm saying? We have to be comfortable being uncomfortable when it comes to spreading the gospel. I tell people all the time, I have my own Discord, right? You have to understand that when I have my own Christian discord and people's like, oh, do I just invite this person? They're a pretty good Christian. I said, yeah, that's cool. But like invite them if they're not a Christian too. 
so that they can be they can be uh, um, exposed to the word, not through the word itself. Again, that's the best way is to read the word and see God's wisdom, but also through our own actions. There's a lot of Christians out there who are not putting into fruition their actions. And people are judging lukewarm Christians and saying, oh, wow, Christianity is like this. I don't want to be a part of that. I'm sorry that you had those bad experiences for anybody who has experienced that. Me personally, I have. I feel like a lot of us have in encountered the wrong person. But let me tell you this. If you ever see somebody playing Beethoven wrong, you don't say the song of Beethoven is horrible. No, it's a masterpiece <laughs> written by God. OK, um, it's a masterpiece. But also, let me let me tell you this. If you see a Christian misrepresenting Christianity, do the same thing. Do not knock down Christianity for itself. Look into it. Right. And also ask the person, excuse me, are you a Christian? Yeah, I am. Well, um, can you explain why you're doing this? A lot of people get angry. Well, I'm, I'm trying to find my way. Don't believe that. Don't believe that heartache. Well, you know, I'm a little bit more spiritual. I don't really get that out of my face. You know, I just like to follow the energy in the universe. Uh, Y'all are funny, bro. Y'all ain't got no wisdom for real, for real. Because you ain't get it from God. That's the only place you can get wisdom from. Hey, well, I don't know why we cooking like this today. We got a 30 minute recording and we're going to keep on going. We're not stopping. So, mm, I don't know. Why am I so aggressive to the mic today? But nah, 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 you see what I'm saying? Like, y'all, you have to see God for wisdom. 